Great relationships don't just happen. They're designed. Why leave love to chance when you can make strategic decisions in your relationship just like you do in your career? The days of having to settle for mediocre are over. Welcome to Project Relationship. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. Join me as I explore the decisions and choices that make relationships work no matter what life throws your way. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Let's go. Hi, and welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton, and I'm here with my partner, Ken Hamilton. Hello. And this is actually the wrap episode for season one. Um, We started this as an experiment. Uh, I was going to start a podcast about my book, Project Relationship, The Entrepreneur's Action Plan for Passionate, Sustainable Love. And as I was thinking about what I wanted to make, I thought, well, people seem to, I drag him a lot of places. Um, I take you a lot of places and people seem to enjoy hearing your perspective on being married to a person like me and just your perspective on life. Well, it's been uh, quite a ride. Yeah. So this was an experiment, an experiment we've decided to continue. We've decided we will make season two starting in January. And so I want to ask you, so we could talk about a bunch of things. So first, let's just celebrate. Like, yes. way to go. We high five us. We did it. Um, we made a thing. And we just high fived because we're actually sitting. I didn't, I don't think I've ever said no, this. I don't think so, so we're recording this on our bed. So we're just in our bedroom sitting on our bed. But the we don't have a lot of places that are protected from sound. And it turns out this is a great place to record from, which means we say to our kids on a regular basis, we're just headed to the bedroom to record. I'm not saying that we haven't gotten a few laughs out of that. I think it's going to become a a lifelong joke amongst our children. Clearly. Oh, great. Mom and Dot are recording in the bedroom. Great. (laughs) Our youngest said, Oh, yeah. So we're going to go recording. Oh, you're going to make a sex tape? I'm like, Oh, face palm. Actual face palm. Okay. Time to have that talk again. (laughs) Anyways. Um, yeah, celebrate this. This has been great yes. for me. How's been it been great. for you? It's this has been great way different for, for you. It, this is nothing like I've ever done before. Now I've I've sat and talked on panels, and I guess that's kind of like that a little bit, but a little bit more nope. controlled audience. Mm-hmm. So you've sat and talked on a panel, say at a SAR, a sexual attitude reassessment yep. um, class, which is usually held for like sex therapists in training, sex educators in training. You've talked about aspects of your life. Um, polyamory, BDSM, things like that. You've talked about those, but those are small, confined spaces. Yeah. And the people in the room have a, have made a working agreement to keep confidentiality. And I've been led to understand that the internet is a small, confined place with lots of confidentiality. Oh, excellent. So That's I perfect. Felt this was a great We'll fit. just let him live in that <laughs> mystery, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> this is, it's been fascinating for me to watch you get vulnerable. So I, I'm known for wearing my, heart and everything else on my sleeve. I enter storytelling contests. I won a smut slam storytelling contest Handily, down in DC. That was great. That was awesome. Um, and I talk about my stuff out in public really easily, but you haven't. I have not. Traditionally. And so since. Um, this is not calculus. Since No, it is not. <laughs> since beginning this intimate relationship with you 10 years ago. Oh, okay. Also, I'm very old. <laughs> 10, 11, whatever. Uh, whatever. Some decade ago. i just counting decades now. Um, I've gained a lot of... Okay, I'm going to try to say this plain. It's awesome to talk about our relationship as it is, not as I wish it to be. Yeah. So I am a generally regular old middle-class white Cisgender. cis um definitely privileged hetero out passing, the wazoo. Yeah. Totally hetero passing no matter how queer you are doesn't matter i i come across i mean aside from what i'm wearing right now that's but true. i come across very I, I have all the privilege i have a very typical story and as 
a as man, far as media coverage as far as media such, coverage yes. goes and as far as my exposure and the people that i've hung around with for most of my life very uh colonizer types yeah the mainstream colonizer types and it you know what this culture was built for this is another way and it, it's exciting to be talking about hey men people with this masculine upbringing and training hey there's another way so what what would you call the way that you were handling that aspect of you or all those aspects of you what would you call that what was it like repressed i mean i i because i don't want to label it for you it so feels like i did not i i didn't have discussions like this and to whatever extent i wanted to and I don't even know how much I was aware of how much I wanted to. How uh, it didn't seem like there was anyone around to have the conversation with. Which is not true because we've no. been friends, in fact, it's for a very true. long time. So I would have talked. So you would have talked. And there are people at the gym, some yeah. wonderful people there that I could talk to. There are people out in the world that, that I know would talk to me. And... But there are some, um, what we would call barriers to adherence. Yeah. Um, it's, it can be tough to, to work past yep. the, that sort of social more that, and, that you should talk about neutral things yep. or you should talk about, um, uh, superficial sort of su yeah, surface level totally. things, and, or you should talk about mechanical things. Yep. Like if you're holding a beer standing by an engine or. Or if you're drinking a beer, sitting in front of a computer that's got a lot of gobbledygook carrots and hyphens and such, those are those are places you can talk about places. that, right? And but so this is my what is this talking? This is my stake in the ground to say, yeah, I mean that's fine, but I want more. Yeah, I want more of a relationship. And there's there's a couple people recently that I've explicitly reached out and said, hey, can we have more? Uh, yeah more more connection can i can we talk about more of the, the the psychological things is how i think about it but the the what's your experience who are you what drives you what are your stories what do you like what don't you like how has it been for you to have this particular life different from mine and to know those things and to learn uh, the world is so much bigger this way and i would like to invite everybody to to engage in as little, as much of the world as they can. So you talk about that. And I, I think I hear that this feels vulnerable to you. And I hear, I hear this kind of talk described as vulnerable talking. People have commented to me that, wow, you're, you're really, you're, you're being very vulnerable. You're offering yourself very, very honestly. Um, and I, I, I want to both agree and add to that. Yeah. I don't think I know another way to be. I'm not good at um, cloaking these murkier parts of life. Mm -hmm. I've always liked talking about them. But it wasn't until I started studying psychology very explicitly and very, very deeply that I that I started having the language I needed oh, yeah. to really have the discussions. So you and I will say like, oh, I need to have a psychological conversation. And all we really mean is, it needs to be a conversation where we are allowed to bring our our body, mind, soul, the whole thing, yeah. all of it, and our life experience, our past can be here, and our hopes for the futures, and we can sit in the present moment. And it's not so much about, for me, being vulnerable as it is being real. Yeah, so I agree with that 100% because... When I think about vulnerability, okay, so here I am, I'm saying some things and anyone can listen to them and then they can respond. And if they respond in a, in a negative way, I feel like that, like the vulnerability is what if somebody comes in and says, Hey, I heard this thing about you and I don't like it. Yeah. I mean, that's my particular fear around all this, but it's actually a much smaller fear for me than the excitement of getting, getting to be real. So I yeah. like, yeah, I like being in communication with people. And so I, I want to invite everybody now. So if you have things you'd like to hear us talk about in season two, or you have a question, a follow-up question about something that we brought up, something that we may build into a larger discussion, email me, jolie at joliehamilton.com. 
and tell me. I, I'm i curious. I won't necessarily respond individually to um, every email that I get, but if you have a question, yeah, this is this is a uh, this is a play space. This is a, a, a this podcast yeah. was designed to be literally a project about relationships, and it's, it's and a project of our relationship, of our relationship, and it's you and I talking about the realities of our relationship, which sometimes gets very hard and very messy. And as you said last time, we play close to the edge sometimes, and it feels mm -hmm. like wow, it could all come crashing down right now. And it, you know, so far has not. And I don't even know what that means, as and we talked about last time. But my point is that we are not sitting out above everyone, no. laying out how relationships could be. We're just letting you know, this is what we do. This yeah. is how it is. There are as what many ways to have relationship as there are people yeah. out there. And when we have relationships with other people, those function differently, too. Oops. Yes. Though there's not... Yeah. There's not this is not my sole way, my singular way of relating. This is the way that we've created. And this is the way that we have agreed. We make really explicit agreements and we can talk more about how we have come to our agreement style and the ways that we've decided to mm, make, make things explicit that are generally implicit. Yes. But also very exciting for me. Yeah. And, and it is an exciting process. I don't think that the way we do things is the only way. It's just that, okay. um, the Pomeranian's oh, the Pomeranian's coughing. coughing. That's second. not good. Oh, oh the poor Pomeranian. Right. Okay, he's okay. We brought the dog in. We'll learn our lesson this time. I want people to understand that there is no right way to have relationship. There just isn't. And maybe it's possible that if we have more conversations about this, out in public enough conversations can turn into uh, a change a new imagination a new imagination my whole goal yeah. is to reimagine what relationship is because from the moment we're born well before that from, from the moment we're born we are in relationship to other beings and i think that the very narrowly defined um, image that we get of what it means to be married, to be a couple, um, to be in a relationship, to be romantic with someone, to be sexual with someone. It's, it can feel very prescribed. Mm -hmm. And I want to shift the conversation around relationships so that there is enough room for every kind of relationship to be part of that conversation. And I also want to be able to have conversations about what it's what it feels like when you're in the abusive relationships i i the when you're in the abu abusive relationships that are going to turn up in relationship and i don't i don't just mean romantic ones i mean work relationships yeah. and um friendships and when abuse and toxicity and and trouble shows up and yeah what do you do can can these same rules we're talking about can can they happen or is it actually is dangerous, it dangerous? At that yeah point? exactly and and how do we know you know it's and and for me that goes back to what you were saying a minute ago um about the different kinds of relationships and it made me think you know it's like some other things in this culture where so you're you're a teenager or whenever you come into this sort of romantic awareness sure sexual but but the the relational awareness of oh i want to be in relation to people and we're expected if you do it all if if you do but if you do, you're expected to know what you're doing right out of the gate. Right. Without anybody you're telling you, now, this is my experience. Sex, but I think it's like a lot of other people <laughs> to know all those things and how to, how to talk to people and how to, um, a, a, how to be a friend. Forget intimate, you know, like sexual romantic relationships. What about just being a friend? No one ever told me. I mean, they there would say skills. things like, hey, that's friendly. That's not, there's, there's skills, there's techniques, there's things that we can learn if we talk to each other about how it is. We can all learn from each other instead of trying to muddle along by ourselves. So admitting that I didn't know how to be in a relationship um, that wasn't codependent <laughs> was a big, that was a big step forward. Like 
at admitting that. So my parents brought me up um, using the word codependent. My father used it fairly proudly. He he recognized his own codependency, claimed it. And he was like, nope, I actually like this. And my mother agreed. And I have to give them a lot of credit for that. To be able to claim something that is generally seen to be an extremely negative trait, I don't want to say it's healthy, but I appreciate their forthrightness, the fact that they owned it and didn't pr- try to pretend like they were doing something else. Mm-hmm. Um, so for them, codependency meant that they didn't actually have a lot of other friends. There was, um, there was a lot of hiding and covering things up, uh, and just realizing that I was replicating a lot of that in my first marriage. And I was, I was, uh, on the path to replicating that with you in our early stages when I recognized it, named it, when I got the language for it, then I could start making different choices. So I want to have more conversations about, yeah, what, so what's been happening and how are we doing things now that's working and how are we doing things that, that aren't working? Yeah. I, I want to celebrate the, the lessons, but you know, that we've, that we've had one basically that we've, that we've worked through, but also where we're at. So before we started recording this particular episode, we were actually having an argument um, that we'd been kind of having since last night about just, yep. uh, just all the stuff, the holidays, they're hard. The and, holidays and once again, come up and, you mm-hmm. fell into the same gift my, giving my struggles freaking yearly is so ridiculous. So we've talked about this. Problem. We even talked about, we recorded it. Even you could listen Yep. and still you fell still into happened. some, you, it's like you dug yourself a pit and mm-hmm. you just trip into it every December anyways. And and every time. And so sometimes it feels like I'm going around in circles and, oh, it's Christmas again. And here's this thing again. And it's Christmas again. And here's this thing again. And as we have, as I have learned the, the, the psychological language, the, the, the skills and techniques of talking about our relationship, um, it stops being a circle and becomes more like a spiral. Oh, here's the situation again, but it's a little different this time. I there are things I know and don't know. And there are some, I mean, it's, it's been a day and a half instead of two weeks right. of disaster. So, you know, there's change, there's visible change every time. And in my estimation, progress, not necessarily resolution of the problem, but progress toward what I would like to have happen, which is but I think we'd all like to have happen, which is a peaceful holiday season. Yeah. Well, you know, you, that's an interesting point. There's there's a great saying about psychological complexes that we don't learn. We don't res- we don't solve them. We don't cure them. We learn to dance with them. We mm-hmm. learn to to live with them um, in a in a more or less harmonious way. Um, and some of the complexes that you and I have, some of the the troubles have eased. They've literally just gotten easier. Yep. Some of them, we learn new ways to look at them. And something that I really appreciate about you is how you you love me because of my particular weirdnesses. I do. Not in spite of that. I have trouble believing that's true of you for me, even though you tell me it is. It's yeah. a hard thing to accept. So the thing is, I knew that the Christmas troubles were completely still on the table, even though we've been at this for 11 years. And even though you had sat down with me and had had multiple conversations, I knew it was still on the table because, because the unconscious is so real. And I take it so seriously that there are parts of you that you can't see. There are parts of me yep. I can't see. It's they're They're not just in our peripheral vision. They're beyond that. So even with the wide angle lens that I try to keep on my life, and that's just, you know, rooted in my trauma, hyper vigilance of, of in every angle, I still can't see it all. You still can't see it all. So knowing that that was true, when this argument started last night, I tried to bring it to you in the gentlest way I knew how and say, so what's, what's this all about? And you, you did. It was a very... Uh, it was as easy an opening into the conversation as it possibly could have been. It was, and it still took some time. Mm -hmm. And that I think is the thing that I was most impatient about in earlier years. I wanted resolution to happen quickly. I wanted problems to be identified, strategized, resolved. And some problems can be resolved, handled that way. But 
most issues, especially ones that are rooted deep, deep down. Yeah. It's one's... not that it, that progression isn't really how it works. I, I, the image of the spiral, you never step in the river, the same river twice. Um, that you you keep coming back to something, you deal with it. And then you're going to have to come back to it again. Yeah, I'll be back not, here next year. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Hopefully get ahead of it a little bit, but it's not gone. So it's we can make improvements, there. but trying to, trying to cure things. So I tell people the same thing about jealousy. Um, trying to cure jealousy is, it's cutting off a, a very natural, normal human experience. Now, how you handle jealousy, what you do with yeah. jealousy those things matter and you can teach yourself how to manage it differently, but trying to cure it as in, I'll never feel it again, right. or I will not feel it in regards to this particular kind of situation or I, trying it's to like cure curing it. anger or happiness. Yeah. I <laughs> but what you do with it is important for your right. relationship. And I feel the same way about these, these messy tangled up pieces of our ourselves, our individual selves that interact, some of them poorly yep. with each other. And I appreciate your willingness to hear me out because we had, I say we had an argument and we did, but it was more like just sort of a, a languid conversation, just sort of puddled along. And I'm, of, I'm okay, very slow as, as we you have mentioned a slower in, pace. in my conversations and, about this. But, what, but but we let each other just have the talk. And what it was it was helpful. What I felt was that in this situation and what we were talking about, yep, you came into it gently and openly. And it's it's not a great situation. It's not a it's not a big deal. It's just a gift giving just issue. A gift giving issue. And it's it's not at all uh earth shattering. It's just annoying because here it is again. But what you didn't do, what you avoided doing is energizing the part of me that generates the problem. Yeah. Cause the you, you knew enough. We, we have learned together enough so that you didn't, you didn't go right up to it and zap it, which. And that has been a learning then, curve for me. Cause that is my, my yeah, and, preferred. And what happens then is everything slows down even more. <laughs> it does. But you said that the, the biggest thing that came out of this particular trouble was that you felt bad about yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, I found myself sort of, ugh, really? Right. <laughs> I, I felt yeah. like, but haven't we been talking about just that, that you're going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes. And it isn't, and, it is a measure of you. And so just, it's as not a, a measure of your no, whole it, you. It isn't. And so as an aside from this particular conversation, Apparently, there's something else I want to feel bad about myself for. And I used this as the placeholder. Yeah. And I, I'm curious what this... So now I have a question for myself to, to dig into. Let's muddle through some talks about self-esteem in relationship Ooh. in the future. Yeah, and there's a lot to talk about there. There is. Okay. So this season has been fantastic. I've enjoyed it a lot. Um, This episode will publish, I think, on right after... Christmas in between yeah, Christmas and I think New so. Year's. Yeah. And we'll be back in January. In the meantime, please feel free to email me, Jolie, J O L I, at JolieHamilton.com if you want to, yeah, pose a question or, or a topic that you'd like to see covered. And thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging with us. Yeah, thank you. And it's... for joining in with the, this project <laughs> that I'm, we've that I'm we've looking taken forward on. to next season and get it, you know, finding out what people want to talk about and hear and um it's been fascinating. It it's has. been fun to talk to you and we will bring in we'll bring in some new topics. We'll delve in deeper to some of the topics we've covered already and we'll cover some issues around the practical stuff. How do we deal with relationship hmm. stuff that in the here and now? Yep. Like, okay, what could I do today to make that that different? So, yeah, season two coming to you soon. Thanks so much for doing Thanks this. Thanks, oh, thank you for I'm putting this all together, Jolie. So glad that you joined me with it. Oh, it's good. been more fun with you than it ever would have been without you. So, thank you, and thank all of you for listening. Thank you so much.
Thank you for listening to the Project Relationship Podcast with Dr. Jolie Hamilton and Ken Hamilton. If you've enjoyed our conversation, uh, we would be super grateful if you could drop a rating and a quick review so that more people will be able to find us. In episode 13, Ken and I talked about what we've learned by taking the project of our relationship a little bit more public than we'd ever done before. Ken admitted that it was a little scary, but mostly really exciting to finally be talking about what he cares about beyond the limited imagination of what dude behavior is supposed to be. Together, we've made a little time capsule of our relationship, not as a model of what love should be, but just about what our love looks like and feels like today. There's no one right right way to relate. The fun is in figuring out how to keep becoming more yourself and more connected as you grow and change. Join us next season when we take the conversation a layer deeper. We'll be sharing ways that help us make everything talk aboutable. If you have a topic or a question you'd like us to address, reach out to me at jolie at joliehamilton.com. Season two is coming really soon. So until next time, remember, relationships can be messy, and that's good news. <laughs>